Okay, folks, we're back. I'm Rich Folley. This is PBS Book View Now. We're at the Miami Book Fair 2016, and we're sitting with Mindy McGinnis, whose new book, The Female of the Species, is out now. Uh, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. There's a, this is a very um, topical book. It's also a brutal book. There's some real difficult things that really deals uh, with rape culture in high schools. You're from Ohio. It takes place in a small Ohio town. Um, talk about what brought you to this idea of rape culture and the importance of this at this time. Well, I worked in a high school library for 15 years. I actually worked in the high school that I graduated from. And uh, it's actually, it's a very nice place. It's a kind place, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's always a safe place. And there, were, there are the small things that are allowed to pass every day that are microaggressions against girls, uh, specifically is what the book deals with, but in, in many different ways you see things that are allowed to occur. And I remember things when I was in high school in the 90s that girls simply wouldn't let pass now. And we did, we allowed things to happen because they were normalized. And I see a definite um, pushback against that now, and I'm, I'm very happy for it, but there are still definite things that happen that, that girls are still treated as objects, very much so. And so I wanted to write a book for them. I wanted to write a book about female rage, which I don't think is often addressed correctly. Whenever we see women in um, violent roles, it's usually sexualized. And very rarely is it actually about their anger or their rage or their violence. It's about how they look while they're performing their violence, and I, I very rarely see it addressed in the same vein that male anger is handled, and I wanted to see those two things equalized and, and treated uh, with the same amount of weight without it being even, even burdened with, unfortunately the term would be burdened, even burdened with the tag of being feminist. It's, uh, it's justifiable anger, mm -hmm. and I wanted to write the book for, for the girls that feel the pushback against them when they aren't okay mm -hmm. with a smack on their rear or they aren't okay with someone. Uh, just recently there was an article run by the NY Post about um, Hillary Clinton doing her first public speech with no makeup and that was the headline. Clinton does speech with no makeup and that's so hard to deal with. It's, yeah. She's an incredibly intelligent woman, whatever else you would, whatever your political leans are, you have to admit that she's intelligent and her headline is no makeup. Yeah, well, the, that story, I, I read the same story. It was a, it was a tricky one for, to, to navigate because there was a lot of women who saw it as some sort of a rebuttal you know, to what was going on and the need to sort of look a certain way. And then there are other people who saw the headline and, and it leaves some men perhaps uncertain about how to step, or women even in sure. that case. And I think your book actually addresses both. You have, we should first explain, Alex is your, your lead character. She has a sister, Anna, who has been brutally raped and murdered. And she's, and, and we learn early on, I don't think this is a spoiler, no. that she, she kills the person who was responsible for that. And there's an act of vengeance. Yes. Um, and as you said, she is vengeance. I won't list any other spoilers other than to say that you have another character who's a woman who's a preacher's kid. Her name is PK, PK, preacher's kid. And then another character, Jack, who you write as a male. Yes. And they're navigating the same sort of thing from different perspectives, both a female perspective and a, and a male perspective. And perhaps you can explain the role those characters played in the book for you too. Yes, absolutely. It was... It was, writing it was an experience because writing from the POV of Alex, the girl who has uh, committed violence and without guilt, at least the first time, and kind of navigating her life after the fact, because she is also, she is not um, punished in any way because she is not caught. So she is able to uh, live this life where she has committed a major crime and gotten away with it, which doesn't leave her, while she may not have guilt, she certainly does have some reservations about the world that she can move in, having done this and still have perfect freedom. And she recognizes the danger within herself and wishes to, in some ways, restrict her own movements just for others' safety. And then she becomes friends through a volunteer effort at a dog kennel with PK, who is a kind person and a loving person, but she has her own urges inside of her that do uh, occasionally call for violence just in those little microaggressions, like I said before, that women and girls face every day. She has uh, 
pushback and towards other women as well. She has a lot of anger and she is one of the people that does not act on it. And so uh, it festers. And then, but she is overall a positive person and a kind and a caring person. And then um, my male POV, which was actually my first time writing a male character and I really enjoyed doing it. And I think it's very important to um, say that while the book is definitely feminist, it has a very strong male character supporting character who is a, he's a good person he is a kind loving caring person and you see a lot of I can say easily through my 15 years working at the high school that uh, I think male teens get a bad rap I don't think they get enough credit for being kind for being compassionate for being empathetic I see a lot of wonderful um, boys that are, are growing up to be men that are, um, they're very much burdened with the idea of the toxic masculinity that the culture wants from them just as much as women are. And I see that and I wanted to represent that in the book as well. And so we have a male POV who, you know, he notices girls, he notices women, he, that's his biological imperative. And he's finding ways to do this, to navigate that and to navigate his desires in a respectful way. And um, I thought it was an important thing to illustrate that there are challenges for him every day as well, just as many, I think, uh, but they're, they're different. And he doesn't face, um, in some ways, physical assault the way a, a girl does. I think it's hard uh, when you think about when I read these characters for them both to stand up and to be vocal and to say the things that they want to say and to be, do so in a rational way when there's so many pressures, social pressures on them at that age that that's already difficult to deal with. One of the things that comes up a lot is the idea of locker room talk. Yes. And, and it, it's something that um, comes up in your book, the way that men talk about women, the way that women talk about other women sometimes. Um, and then now here it is being sort of normalized on the campaign trail at the same time. To, to me, that was, as I was reading this book, that was one of the first things that jumped to mind. How that behavior that is being condemned in this book is also being sort of normalized. Uh, absolutely. Normalized and excused and, and um, talked away. It was away. used as an excuse. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and and was, accepted yeah. as an excuse, which right. I also think is important to note. Um, I have many, many uh, friends that are males, very close friends. And uh, I, would, I asked them after that experience, you know, is that, is that true? Is, there, is that how you talk about me when I'm not around? And they're like, no. And they said, shit, there are guys that do. There's absolutely no contest against that. But I don't. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's a male saying, I don't talk about my wife like that. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about my friends like that. Well, the next step is do you, and do I, do anybody, um, speak up when they hear something like exactly. that? Exactly. That's the, it's that not is the necessarily next step. whether we do it. Yes, whether we participate or whether we um, chose to idle right. and allow is, is the next thing. And I think, I think that's something that everyone has to kind of absorb in this uh, post-election culture that we're living in. I live in Ohio, and I can safely say that most of the people that I live around probably are Trump supporters. And I actually understand the reasonings. I know many decent people that voted for Trump, but I also need uh, them to understand what they have aligned themselves with and the broader implications. I understand voting with your wallet because I've done it. So I do, I do see, I see points on both sides, but I have my own leanings and they're, they, they certainly go towards the left. And I think now the important thing is for everyone, it's not a matter of them versus us. I, I think that that, that is a very, broad thing that I like to think the book speaks to is that it's not a question of them versus us, be it men versus women or, you know, Republicans versus Democrats. I think it's a question of decency versus indecency. Mm -hmm. And you make the decision of whether you're going to be decent every day. It doesn't matter if you were decent yesterday, you have to wake up and be decent today. Mm -hmm. Or if you were indecent yesterday, you can wake up and be decent today. It's, mm -hmm. it's a choice that we're, we're, we're each going to have to make every day. And I think that it's very difficult, but I think that we're, we're all, we're going to, those of us that are, are choosing to see that and uh, help others hopefully to see that as well. I, especially when it comes to the question of, um, I, I hate to use the term versus, because I don't think men versus women is, I mean, many of the most uh, outspoken supporters of women's rights that I know are male. And, and unfortunately, we need their voices to back us up as well, because when a woman is uh, advocating for women's rights, 
she's not going to be heard as much as a male that does. So you 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 came from the library world. Uh, you were a high school librarian, and you worked with high school kids. Yes. What, and now you write to that age group. What are you seeing? And we only have a minute or so left, but I'd love to know is your what are you seeing from that age group in terms of activism, in terms of um, an awareness of some of the issues that, that are affecting society that maybe you, you talked about in the 90s you didn't necessarily speak Absolutely. up about? Um, I went to a very small a rural school and it was in the 90s and I had friends that were gay and I didn't know that they were gay. And now I can say that, they're out now as adults and uh, I can say that my students that I see now, they're out and they're open and uh, there's actually a lot of tolerance where I am from and uh, I shouldn't use the word tolerance, acceptance where I am from and um, I'm very proud of my community for that. And so I see progress every day and, and, and just continuing to endorse that and seeing my students that are uh, homosexual, who are gay, who are trans, and seeing my female students who will stand up for each other and also not stand against one another because um, it, is, it is very ingrained in females to look at other females as potential um, competition. And that's something that I think that we need, we need to get past. I always remind my girls that if you ever watch nature shows, they need to remember that in nature, it's the male that has to have all the pretty colors and do the dance to get attention. <laughs> so I hope that, I hope that they, can, they can take, uh, take those into consideration when they're um, you know, slut shaming or doing any of the toxic things that women tend to do to one another. We, we need to, all of us, get past that. Well, an important book, um, a tough book, yes. but an important book for right now. Um, and uh, there's a lot of uh, buzz and talk about it. And I think it's one of those that are going to drive a lot of conversation. Mindy McGinnis, the book is The Female of the Species. Thanks so much for Thank joining you. us today and for being with us at the Miami Book Fair. Yes, absolutely. Yeah.